This is the third section of the Conic Sections 1 chapter and here we're going to look at uh, rectangular hyperbolas uh, or hyperbola, however you want to pronounce it. Now this is another conic section. You can see now we're slicing these cones in a different way. So we're slicing them vertically before it was a slice at an angle and you've got the parabola. When we slice it vertically like this, what we get are two parabolas. You'll see you'll get one one way up and one the other way up. And depending on how far towards the center or the vertex of the cone you slice, you'll get different size, uh, uh, different sizes of these like dual parabolas. And if we plot it, what we get is a graph you will recognize like this. Okay, so these like represent these two sort of parabolas in a way. This is the reciprocal graph, you recognize this? Okay, so now it's this, we're going to be calling it from now on a rectangular um, hyperbola. Um, and just like the parabola, we can uh, write down an equation for it uh, in parametric or Cartesian form. We can also talk about a general point on the graph. Okay, so it's um, equation in Cartesian form is x, y equals c squared. Um, I suppose you could all also have uh, y equals uh, c squared over x, but we tend to write it um, as x, y equals c squared. That's the form we'll be used to seeing it in. In a parametric form, Uh, we've got a function that defines the x coordinate and the y coordinate and x will be defined as this value of c and it's the same value of c in the Cartesian form equals c uh, x equals ct and y equals c over t. Now like before t can be any real number except 1 and it cannot be 0 because we don't want to be dividing by zero here. So it can be any real number with the exception that t cannot be equal to zero. So we don't end up dividing by zero. That's why we've got this gap here. So when t is zero, this is what happens. You'll end up getting these uh, uh, very big or very small values. Yeah, infinite or zero. So that's why we've got that gap in a graph. If we want to take a general point, on this curve um, in Cartesian form it's going to be xy in parametric form where it's just going to be ct comma c over t yeah you just take those bits of the uh, parametric equation uh, to get your general x and y coordinates so this is our rectangular hyperbola. Okay, the rectangular hyperbola H has Cartesian equation xy equals 64. Let's highlight that. The line L um, has this equation uh, and intersects the curve at the points P and Q. Find the coordinates of P and Q going to do a sketch. So y, x, um, we know that a rectangular hyperbola looks like this. This has equation x, y equals 64. And we've got a line that intersects at the points p and q. Now I'm not going to draw the line on because at the moment I don't know whether the line goes like this and intersects the two uh, parts of the graph that way or whether it goes like this and intersects there or even goes like this. Yeah, I don't know where those intersections are and I don't want to draw it 
and mislead you into thinking it, it looks that way. So maybe if we work that out after we've done part A, then we might draw the line in and input where the points P and Q are. Okay, so the first bit here is just about solving uh, x, y equals 64 and x plus 2y minus 36 equals 0. We want to solve those simultaneously. Okay, here's a little trick we could use to solve this simultaneously. What we could do is take this and multiply it all by y. Yeah, they do use a slightly different approach in the book. Um, this might actually be a little bit quicker. So if I multiply everything in that by y, I'll get xy plus 2y squared minus 36y equals 0. Now I can substitute this xy for 64. So that will give me 64 plus 2y squared minus 36y equals 0. Uh, rearrange it so I'll get uh, 2y squared minus 36y plus 64 equals 0. Let's divide everything by 2. So we get y squared minus 18y plus 32 equals 0. This factorizes. And let's see, 32, 16 and 2, yes, so minus 16 minus 2. So that gives us y equals 16, y equals 2. Then what we can do, if we take our x, y equals 64 and rearrange it as x equals 64 over y, 64 over y, so what does that mean? Well, when y is 2, when y is 16, sorry, that will give us x equals 64 over 16, which is 4. And then when uh, y is 2, x will be equal to 64 over 2, which is 32. So we have the coordinates of p and q um, as, now we don't know which one is which, so let me call uh, p the one that is just my one at the top, 4, 16, and q. Um, that will be my 32, 2. So we don't know which way round they are. Now notice uh, that I've actually got two coordinates here which are both positive, which actually means that this uh, line L that intersects, intersects um, at the top in this first quadrant so it's going to look something like this yeah and if I match it up with my diagram so this is L here um, the one with the bigger x coordinate is Q so that would be Q and this one here would be P the one with the bigger y coordinate okay and then move on to part B it says find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of PQ in the form y equals mx plus c. So the first we want to do is to find the midpoint of pq. Okay, so we're going to do that by adding together the x coordinates and dividing by 2. So that'd be 4 plus 32 over 2. And the y coordinate 16 plus 2 over 2. So that would give me a midpoint of what, 36 divided by 2, which is 18. And 18 divided by 2, which is 9. OK, so this is the midpoint. So the line goes through that point. And the other thing that we need is the gradient. Uh, and we want to find the uh, line which is perpendicular or the gradient which is perpendicular so now we're going to work out the gradient of PQ gradient of line uh, PQ or the line segment from P to Q so uh, let's do that now so we'll work out the difference between let's do Y2 minus Y1 so it's 2 minus 16 
over x2 minus x1, so 32 uh, minus 4. So what am I going to get? Minus 14, 2 minus 16, over 32 minus 4, which is at, at 28. So that will simplify to minus a half, which means the gradient of the perpendicular, gradient of the perpendicular line, I'll just put perp, is going to be equal to 2. So I've got the gradient and a point that it passes through. So I'm almost there now in terms of writing the equation of the line. So it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c. So I've got y equals gradient 2x plus c. Let me substitute in the point 18.9 to work out what c is. So I'll just put here that I'm substituting that in. So it'll be 9 for y equals 2 times x, 2 times 18 plus c. So if I work that out, uh, 2 times 18 is 36. So I'm going to do 9 minus 36, which gives me minus 27. So c is minus 27. So my final answer is going to be y equals 2x minus 27 for the gradient of the line and it's in the form that they uh, require. Let's highlight in a colour where you can see what I've written. Here we go. Okay, should now be able to do exercise 2D on pages 44 to 45. So recapping this rectangular hyperbola. So this is just one of these conic sections where we slice through in a different way. Slice through our cones in a different way. Um, that gives us a graph that looks like this. Yeah, we recognize that as the reciprocal graph. Then um, its equation in Cartesian form will be xy equals c squared. In parametric form, it will be x equals ct and y equals c over t. t can be any real number, but not zero. And if we pick a general point on the line, if we call this P, P can be X, Y, or in parametric form, a general point will be CT, comma, C over T.